Hi, I'm Ed Hammerly from NJ Renewable Energy. Uh, we are here in my basement uh, looking at my water furnace geothermal heating and cooling system for my home. Um, when we purchased this system, we also got what they call a D superheater, which comes out of uh, these pipes right here, uh, the upper portion. The lower pipes go to the actual loop in the ground, but these pipes here um, go to a coil that basically goes around the compressor inside this unit. And when this unit operates, it uh, the compressor inside here gets rather hot. And when it does this, it becomes a little inefficient because of heat. Uh, so what we've decided to do, or the way they've designed these systems, is that what they do is they extract that heat off of the compressor, therefore making it work more efficiently. And with that extra heat, that free heat, we're going to take it and, and perform some type of task. Um, some type of task. And, and in the past, or for most geothermal systems, particularly water furnace systems, they'll use that heat for hot water heating. So we'll supplement some of the heating that the, that the hot water tank would uh, need to produce by free heat from the, from the DC superheater. Um, on my home, and you'll see my other videos, I have a SunMax evacuated tube, tube solar thermal system. So I'm producing most of my heat by the sun. So this DC superheater really isn't doing as much work for me as it used to. So since that time, I have converted it to, to do radiant floor heating. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to show you today. Okay, so it's hard to see here, but this is my basement underneath our den. The den was originally a breezeway in our 1965 Cape Cod. The floor of the den is concrete, so we have a great thermal mass to work with. I'm using four foot extruded aluminum plates that are, that are used with half inch pecs. These plates will transfer the heat from the water that's inside the pecs into the concrete. Now I chose to use two methods to secure this to this ceiling. First, I'm using a very high quality, uh, pretty good thermal transfer adhesive caulk. It's probably overkill here, but I also used a ram set gun to secure them even further. You'll see in some places, the nails didn't go in completely into the concrete, but I assure you, they're going nowhere. I apologize for the lack of video, but once, once all the flat plates were in, I then proceeded to clip in all the half inch pecs. Now it's hard to see here, but there is a method to my madness. You may notice that I have skipped every other row of flat plates. This is done in order to try to transfer the heat evenly across the floor. It also prevents sharp bends and gives you a clean method to get you back to where you started. Whatever pipes were not connected to the flat plate heat exchangers, we insulated back to the D superheater. Once the tubing was complete, I insulated below the flat plates with two inch radiant foil covered insulation board. This way, whatever heat we didn't transfer by conduction will hopefully transfer by convection. One other key element to this project was the spiro vent. Once we charge the system with water, this little device does a fantastic job of removing any air bubbles inside the line. It's a must for any radiant floor system. So there you have it. Our system has been up and running for about a year. It's changed a room and floor that was always chilly to a den that is comfortable with 75 to 80 degree floors. Nothing like warming your feet on a winter day.
Want to learn more about renewable energy, sustainability, passive house design, or EV charging? Contact me at njrenewableenergy.com.